Hey, hey, what is going on, you guys? It is Monday, Marketing Monday, typically with Johanna Hunt, but we're doing things a little different today. I've got James here with me, and we are gonna talk a little bit about how to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Is it as easy as it sounds? Excited? Oh, totally. Let's okay. do it. All right, let's do it. So guys, <laughs> as you're hopping on, say hello. I am kicking off the 14 day challenge that I'm doing with our team. So I'm gonna be going live every single day for 14 days with some of the best marketing tips that I have. Margaret, what's going on? Um, but today I wanted to talk first about mindset and I wanted to get us into a zone of getting some clarity on what it is that we actually want to achieve in our lives, whether that's a personal goal or whether that's a business goal. And is it as easy as it sounds? Because it seems like you could just say, hey, this is what I want. But I think a lot of people, when they think about what they want, there's actually a lot of fear and doubt that comes with it. And is it even achievable? And um, what inspired this conversation is I actually went through this process myself. And James and I met a couple weeks ago? Yeah, maybe, well, maybe three, three, three or four weeks ago. Three or four yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and had a great connection and then we started talking hey sister we started talking a little bit about, about this and he sent me a podcast that he'd done and so when i was coming back from san diego i actually took some time listened to the podcast and heard his story and it inspired me to reach out to him again and have a conversation um anita what's up uh because there's oops what have i done here because we were so much on a similar journey and uh, a couple of things really sparked for me. And one of the things he said was, you don't have to have it all figured out to take the first step. Like figuring out what it is you want and then the why will present itself. And we know this, like we, we read about this, we hear about this, it's a conversation that we have, but something about it just really, I don't know if it was the timing or what it was, it just struck me and um, yeah, I was excited for us to do a live on it and talk a little bit more and dive a little bit deeper. So that's my introduction. Nice. James. Well done. well done. Yeah, and you know what, guys? I never, I rarely actually do a dual interview or a broadcast where I actually have somebody sitting in my house next to me. So this is kind of fun and exciting. Yeah, it's, hey, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, it's all about impacting others, right? That's what we're here for. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to let James share a little bit about his story, um, but he is with Leap Zone Strategies. That's right. And um, that is his business, is coaching. So share a little bit about your background. Yeah, you yeah. Okay, so, I'll sit back and let you. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so James Gardner. Uh, I am a performance coach with a company called Leap Zone Strategies. We are a branding, marketing, and coaching company. And we work with uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, uh, working on their personal brand and their business brands, uh, elevating them in, in all facets of, of their business from, from performance to positioning to personality, the, the, the message and the congruence uh, you know, at the nucleus of really before the even logo and website kind of even come into fruition. Who are you about? What are you about? what do you want, which is clarity, which is really what this conversation is about today. Yeah, huge on clarity. Who would love some clarity? Drop us some flame emojis in the flames. comments. If claim, it flames. Fire it up. <laughs> Fire it up. If, uh, if clarity is what you're seeking, because I really think that is the first step, is getting clear on what you want. Yeah. And not even asking yourself, is what I want possible? But it's just allowing yourself permission to want what you want. And that's one of the things that came up in our conversation was I was thinking of all these roadblocks about who I am and is what I want actually achievable and what does that look like? And you said to me, well, you know, you just have to get creative. Yeah. Did you say that or did I say that? Well, no, I, I think we both said it, and, yeah. you know, in, in different semantical versions of that. But yeah, it's, it's first off, it, it's awareness. So, you know, you're, you had a, a, a burning awareness that something wasn't sitting right, I needed to make a change, I'm not sure if I have the courage, I don't even know what that change looks like. But you were aware that something was out of alignment. Yeah. And, and same thing for myself and, and, and the journey that I've gone through is there was this burning underlying kind of catalyst of something needs to change and I don't know what it is. Uh, so once I had that awareness, then it was like, how do I get clear? Um, and we talk about clarity and, and you know, we, and we all know, oh, I, well, I, I, I want to live a Wi-Fi lifestyle. 
that's not being clear, right? Being clear is doing what we call the deep work, right? You need to go and do the deep work to get beyond that superficial clarity, really. What, what, is, what is at the roots, the, the anchor of what, the essence of what you're all about um, and really getting to that and then from the inside out starting to let it permeate through. Mm -hmm. right? And I think that's kind of what you are, you, you know, you can share with what your journey was. My journey was the same in, in a sense that uh, I had achieved a lot of things. I wasn't happy. I know I needed something more. Uh, I was letting societal pressures and, and uh, other people's viewpoints basically dictate guilty <laughs> you know <laughs> what I thought I wanted to do right and and first off we all know those people we can't be around that vibration yeah. right I mean uh, the, the, the naysayers if, if, if there's naysayers out there that are around you then y y you need to tuck them away and uh, and and surround yourself with you know high vibes of the highway is what I say yeah. Right. People who give you permission to be you, like your That's authentic right. self. And, That's right. You know, that was one of the conversations we had too. A lot of um, the fear I had around deciding, hey, Adam, what's going on? A lot of the fear I had around deciding the kind of lifestyle that I wanted to have and, you know, like the shifts that I wanted to make at this point in my life. Um, I had a lot of fear around like, well, what are my like responsibilities and my titles and what are people going to think about me being somebody who is making myself a priority? Like I'm not a typical mother and like, what does that even mean? Right. And we had that conversation yeah, and he's yeah. like, who says you have to be a typical mother? Like what, what is that even? I'm you not know? a typical dad. Just I'm having, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, no, that's exactly yeah. what you said. You're like, I'm not a typical dad. And I was like, I love that you said that because you just opened up the truth for me to feel like I have this safe space to say, you know, what? I'm not a typical mom and I don't want to live a typical lifestyle. Um, whatever that means. What does typical mean anyways? Right? right? Like what right. is normal? I'm going to bring this a little closer to us. I feel like it's really far away. Um, and when you get around people like that, who give you the permission to live bigger, to just be really honest with yourself about what it is you want, it's it's very liberating it's extremely liberating that's what kind of inspired this conversation too so okay so we were mentioning not having to have it all figured out in order to take the first steps and that you know there's this like idea that momentum is leaps and bounds <laughs> typical is freaking boring <laughs> i agree um <laughs> So there's a misconception that it's leaps and bounds and that in order to make changes, you have to make these radical shifts. You have to have it all figured out. Like, you know, for me, the goal has always been to live between two places. I grew up in California. I have family in Austria. It was always my desire to create a lifestyle where I could be in two places and have that space. And I'm like, well, how am I going to make that work? Like, is that even possible? And after our conversation, James actually reached out to me and was like, hey, um, you know, I'm going to be in Vancouver. If you're not either in Paris or San Diego <laughs> <laughs> by next week. And I'm like, it's funny that you say that because I just booked a trip to Paris <laughs> and I just decided to go back to California after our conversation. He's like, holy shit, woman, you move fast. <laughs> <laughs> get shit done <laughs> within like a matter of days it was so clear to me so, on what I wanted to do and a lot of people have messaged me and they're like what do you mean you're going back to California like are you gonna live there how long are you gonna be there for and I'm like you know what? I don't I don't know I don't know I know I'll be in Paris and Brussels for a week in Europe and I know that I will be back in California I'm gonna spend some time with friends and family I don't know where I'm staying yet. I don't have a car yet. I don't have a plan. And it is actually probably the best I've felt uh -huh. in longer yeah. than I can remember. Because yeah. for me, when nothing changes, nothing changes. And I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with that level of certainty in my life that there won't be any evolution and that the things that I want won't exist. Yeah, and, and her experience is an example of once you once you do get clear, the roadblocks vanish, and then it's you jump into that flow state, and then it just happens. It does. It just happens, and so I'm in a, a transition right now too, where I'm heading uh, back east 
to uh, to take care of family affairs, with, you know, with my my folks that are kind of moving on and, and uh, towards the end of their life, and it just kind of I was clear that I I, I this is how I'm going for two weeks and. And I, I didn't know how I was getting there. I didn't didn't know how I'm getting from Boston to Rhode Island. And I didn't. I, I knew that I wanted to have uh, business meetings out there and meet some people and reconnect. And and, and it's like I look now and I'm like, I just designed this. It just it just designed by itself, in a sense, because I would just became clear on this is what I want to happen. What is my intention for that time away, mm. right? And then I give it attention. With, with a little sprinkle of love and everything we do, and it's magic. Right? Yeah. And you don't need to magic. have Magic. You don't need to have all the answers. That's the key. Yeah. But you know, it's so interesting how things start to open up because once I made this decision, like all of a sudden I'm meeting all these amazing people from Southern California. I'm expanding my network. People are coming across my, across my path. Like I'm being drawn to a certain place and a certain time. Like the things with Europe are opening up for me to go there. Like I wasn't sure if I was gonna go and how it was gonna work and the timing and if I'd have the energy. And then I just said, well, do I wanna go or don't I? Yes, I wanna go. And that was it. And then it's all just kind of things that started to happen with the trip to California. Um, you know, I run an Airbnb in Europe and the gal who works with me over there and hosts, she's like, why don't you start an Airbnb in Southern California? Like mm. the ideas are just starting to propel, right? And and these conversations are coming up where the how is starting to present itself now that I've gotten clear on the what and just given myself permission to want what I want. And there's so much power in that. It seems so simple, but it's not because we're so conditioned to think we have to do things a certain way in order for it to work. And we have to have it all figured out. We need a five-year plan, we need a 10-year mm. plan. Yes, if you have a business, you should definitely have a strategic plan in place to reach your goals. Um, and you should be following a guideline. But when it comes to deciding what you want your life to look like in five years from now or 10 years from now, sometimes it's, you know, it's taking the first step. And it's funny, because I was actually afraid to ask for what I want. And we ended up having um, I ended up having a conversation with Cam about, you know, what that looks like for us and for the kids and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, well, what if I, what if I decide that I want to stay there long term, right? And he's like, well, why don't we figure it out at that time? Like, let's just figure out the first steps. And we started to get creative about, okay, we were together for 12 years. We have kids. We have all these things going on. How do we get creative so that he can have the life he wants, I can have the life I want, our kids can be happy. Um, we could do things the way most people do. <laughs> and you just, you don't get what you want when you do it that way, you know? Like you need to really think creatively and- um, And that's where the spark comes from. Too. Yeah. Once you have that mind shift of, okay, I'm gonna make this happen and how can I be creative to make it happen? You know, there's, there, there's ways, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And the most, one of the, the main things is you talked about momentum is yeah, we, we, get, we get lost sometimes in thinking that they have to be these big needle movers, right? These big epic things and, and no, you know, at Leap Zone we use the term catalyst tasks. There are strategically in business, we design these small little needle movers, right? Because those generate the first step or the second step or when we're at a plateau and it's like, how do we, how do we keep going? And sometimes you need to, to just do those, those simple very next step. What is the very next step? And sometimes it's not earth shattering. You know, it could be for, for, for you, you know, with the, the, the amazing content you come up with, sometimes it's you just going for a walk, right? Sure. It's just something that stimulates uh, and, and, and bridges the gap and brings you back around, right? Somebody said, somebody commented in on a post I did when I made that decision to make this move. And they said to me, like, you know, I wish I could be more like you. You're so motivated to live your life the way you want. I'll tell you, I have felt so low energy over the last few months because I've felt this unalignment. And that unalignment takes a lot of energy out of you. And it takes a lot of energy to create alignment too. But either way, you're you're putting that energy out, you know, like you, whatever you're doing, if you're maintaining the status quo, 
that's hard. That takes energy. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something completely different and you're living your life in alignment, that takes energy too, but there's a different type yeah. of energy. Like the minute I got clear on what I wanted, I started to get excited and suddenly I had the energy to start moving the pieces forward and what I needed to do because I'm inspired now. Like the action that I'm taking is inspired. I'm not working to pay the bills. I'm not working to maintain the mundane of every day. <laughs> like I am working towards, you know, we started talking, we had coffee this morning and we were talking about like, what's the next step? And I'm like, okay, well first it was just spending the next like three months in California. And I'm like, who knows? Maybe I'll fly to the south of France. Or maybe, <laughs> like, yeah. maybe I'll go to Australia. Like, there's lots of things that I want to do in that time. And to just, like, suddenly the ball has started to roll. And the ideas are starting to come. And the possibilities seem endless. But it started with that one single uh -huh. decision. And would you say that uh, in those three months leading up to this, this um, mindset shift, if you will... You know what we're going and we're we're pushing like we know something's out of alignment but but we push to get back into alignment oh yeah right and what's happening now is and I think you and I when we were walking back we talked about it's just we're in this flow state you know where nothing's really changed you know uh, it, it, objectively nothing's changed except we've just had a mind shift right we've changed our inner story and our perception we've become clear and now everything we do is effortless in a sense. It's so true. Right? I have been pushing. I have been pushing, yeah. pushing, pushing with this like need to make things happen, need to make things shift. Um, just because I've been fighting like what is the clarity and I've been fighting kind of against what I actually want too. And so there's been this, what's the word I'm looking for? This resistance. Friction? Friction? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely some friction. <laughs> There's been this level of resistance for me. Um, it's like everything has been more difficult than it needs to be because I've been fighting this internal battle mm. in my mind of like what I want, what I think is possible. No, that's not okay. You're not allowed to have that. No, that's, you know, maybe. Maybe that's for some people or maybe that's like years down the road. You can have that. Um so there's all this resistance, like everything I've been doing, um, I'm just going to get, oh, I should turn off my notifications. Everything I've been doing has felt like so much effort and it's left me really drained. Mm -hmm. And so now I've been letting go of that how and really thinking to myself, you know what, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like focus on the present, what I can do today to move towards that. Um, yeah. And I think. Like some of the other things we talked about is, you know, what do you need in order to, to decide on what you want? Like, you know, a lot of people think it takes strength and courage and confidence. Let's talk about like mm. the order of those things, because I think a lot of times we see somebody doing something and we're like, well, that it's easy for them. They're so confident. Like they're confident doing live video. They're confident talking to people. They're confident in making decisions. And we think that they're born with it or it's just something that they come by naturally or they're just a strong person. They're just somebody who has yeah. courage. So let's talk about the order of those, those things. <clears throat> Would you like, like me to begin? Yeah. Okay. Cause <laughs> all right, well, I, I feel very strongly for myself and, and this is how I, I operate by design is um, I feel very strongly that once we have an awareness of something needs to change, uh, I think courage is the first step to, um, to really stimulate uh, action forward, uh, whether it's uh, you know the baby step or the strategy of what it even looks like, um, having the courage to uh, be comfortable in the skin of not being typical parents, right? Or having the courage to say, hey, I want to live in Europe three months out of the year and I want to do this and do that. Or uh, courage to <clears throat> say, I'm not happy. Well. <laughs> right? Like that alone takes huge courage to just admit the fact that, you know what, I'm not happy doing what I'm doing or I want something different. Yeah. You know, just allowing yourself to be and feel and those I think, things. And I think, yeah. And, and you know, see, it's, it's really hard to, to, 
to really define what is a, the the pecking order of steps. Uh, you know, because I do think it's subjective to the individual that goes through the journey. But we talked a lot about the power of surrender, right? And you know, I think for you, when you hit hit that point of surrender, then all of a sudden the courage kind of came. Like you know, so it's it's one of those one of those dances, right? Um, you know, we, we know that vulnerability and, and surrender can, can yield strength, and it does. And, and, you know, strength, I guess, can be a form of courage, right? It's, it's kind of, yeah. uh, in a sense, a, a, a byproduct or, or a, a same as courage, in a sense. Um, you know, the, the strength, the inner fortitude to, to make a change, to want to to wanna facilitate something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then it's, you know, I, th I think next is... There needs to be some consistent commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we need to we, we stay in the flow state. Right now, we're in the flow state. Her and I, let's say, in our individual journeys, if you will. And that doesn't mean that we don't have days where we're like, oh, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like Saturday, uh, <laughs> if you watched my stories, I was really struggling to be in the flow. Like I had chocolate for dinner and everything I was trying, I was like, just felt like I was banging my head against a wall, but I, I stuck with it. There's times where you take a step back and there's times where you stick with it and then you will get into that flow. Like it is our job to put ourselves into a flow state. It's our job to put ourselves into creating energy. Like if I'm tired, I need to go and create energy, right? Like, I, it's not just gonna come by me sitting and waiting for it. It's mm -hmm. gonna come from me and going and generating it on a treadmill, having a conversation, getting out into the fresh air, um, doing what you need to do to create and maintain. Yeah. And sometimes you have to do that multiple times in a day. You know, you've gotta find what it is that creates that for you. Um, and sometimes it's just a simple conversation, you know, and, 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 and being surrounded by like-minded individuals, right? Yeah, because energy is everywhere. It's, yeah. it's everywhere, right? Yeah. Like you just have to reach out and grab it and create it. And it's the same thing. I think a lot of people think it takes inspiration to do something. Inspiration, I always say inspiration lasts as long as a bath because really, like, <laughs> if you don't take in action on your inspiration immediately, that inspiration can die really quickly. Um, and then you go back to your normal state until you have the next spark of inspiration. So we even talked about it. We almost hopped on a live actually on Friday. I was like, inspired action? I know, <laughs> Let's right? Let's do it. Let's do it. I know. <laughs> let's do it while we're having this conversation. Yeah. Um, okay, so then let's yeah. talk about moving from like strength and courage to confidence. Mm. And I know that's a long conversation. That, yeah, and, and you know, I hear it all the time uh, when people with, with, with clients that are starting a business or revamping or stepping out on the stage and, and going into a different realm component of, of what they do. Well, I don't have the confidence. I, I struggle with finding that. And and it's not, confidence is not some elusive Da Vinci code of you have to have it and you have to find this secret sauce. It's all around us and everyone, everyone on this call, I, I mean, guaranteed, each and every one of the people that are watching this they have their own residual confidence inside. I call it residual confidence. You know, it's like their their bank. You all have had win moments, right? We where we put ourselves out there, where we stepped out on the stage, and and sometimes we need to remind ourselves. And that's uh, getting back to the the deep work. Is what can you do and uh, to even relive some of those moments? And I'll give you an example. So. One tool that I've used in the past, which now a lot of my clients use, is keeping a confidence log. So uh, when I first started this kind of transition about three years ago, I started to kind of write down part of my journaling, was to write down excerpts from my past. It didn't matter if it was yesterday or 30 years ago. Wins, like where I exuded confidence. Because I knew that I was going to need to draw upon this. And sometimes they would just be little taglines or and then sometimes it might be a page or two, right? From different things. And now, as part of my, my, my architecture week to week, I have moments during the week where I just go through, and it's a, it, it's a full journal now, and I just pick out random things. And I realign myself when I showed confidence at a certain time in my life. I love that. Do you guys yeah. do that? Let's see some hearts or some thumbs up. Do you have like a confidence journal? I actually do something similar. Um, I do 
like I have little albums in my phone, almost like a visual board, mm. and I'll have uh, like rank advancements that I've had, or um, you know summits I've been part of, or I even have like when I get positive feedback. Many of you, I have snapshots of comments that you've made there in my go. feed or messages that you've sent me after something I've posted or some results you've had from something I've taught. I snapshot all of those and I put them into an album. And when I'm feeling like I need to realign with what it is I do or I'm not feeling that inspiration or I'm kind of like having one of those days where I just don't know where to begin, uh, maybe I'm feeling low confidence, I haven't had a great night of sleep or something's rocked my foundation, I go into those albums and I look at the impact that I've been able to make by doing what I do and that inspires me. Or I pick up a book yeah. and I just start reading. James is asking me, you know, where, like, do you plan your content? Do you pre-write your content? Or do you mostly just post in the moment? And a lot of it comes from what I'm doing in the moments. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm having a conversation and it inspires something that I think somebody will get value from, that's when I post it. If I read a book and it sparks something in me and it triggers like a strong emotion or an aha, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna share that, but with my personal perspective, because I feel like people will get value from it. So there's lots of different ways to drive that like energy and that confidence um, when you're not feeling that way yourself. Because most of us don't wake up every single day. Like we do have days where we wake up and we're just not, we're yeah. not feeling it, Right. you know? It's called being human. That's right, and it's okay, and, and you know, giving yourself permission to accept that is a very powerful and liberating thing. Yeah. You know, we don't, as humans, we don't always have to be on. Like we want to be, as my, one of my friends and, and dear friends and colleagues says, epic humans. Like we always want to, we want to wake up every day and put our, put on our epic human suit. It's, you know, and it's not always feasible and, and we have to do our best in giving ourselves permission to, uh, to have those down days to recharge. Uh, especially, yeah. you know, when you're in a profession where we're constantly giving out too right that's yeah. that's the nature of what we do uh, and we love it and it inspires us and and yet we do need to recharge our batteries yeah right um, so do you and that wasn't on my notes um, but let's talk a little bit about that real quick let's talk about like how do you fill your own cup how do you when you because a lot of people on here are influencers marketers mm -hmm. coaches um, fitness professionals like pouring into other people quite often so how do you what are some of the tools and things that to keep that going? yeah I I really advocate what we call a winning ritual and and we design this at leap zone for all of our clients it's a non-negotiable uh, you know what does that look like for each individual person but it's their time and it's usually morning time and it's it's their time where they're not on social media they're not answering doing their email triage they're not doing any of that shit they're just focusing inward and I do this as well, of course. And I find when I consistently do that day in and day out, um, I'm less likely to have that tipping point of going and, and having the whole day where I'm just like, fuck, I just need it. I need to check out, you know? Uh, however, when I deviate, because I am human, and we, we don't always follow our best advice sometimes, right? We get caught up and traveling and this and that. And, and so when I deviate, it's like a snowball effect, you know? And all of a sudden, it starts to surface. And I can I sense it coming. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, shit. And then, you know, like I try to circum I try to make a pivotal shift and correct, and sometimes it bites me in the ass. And then it's like, yeah, before you know it, I'm on the couch watching Netflix all day because I just, I just need to binge watch a series just, just to recover. Um, so I try to be proactive towards that. So, uh, and what does that look like? It depends on each of you, right? Uh, it, for me, uh, right now, I do, you know, I do, um, I'm kind of into stoicism, so I do Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic, so I have a little excerpt to read every day. Uh, I have my morning meditation time. I always do an intention of the day. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, how do I want the day to go? Um, yeah, you know, and, and sometimes it's motivational videos, things like that. I always, not always, uh, four or five times a week, I throw in a fitness component to that, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's a, it's a balance of energy in and energy out, information in and information out. Because this is what I find, like, you know, I used to start my days just purely with personal development 
mostly that was taking information in and a lot of people will binge on personal development they're just mm-hmm. we talked about this mm-hmm. yeah, we talk a lot i know i know <laughs> i don't think we've stopped talking we got a whole um, show here, a series for you coming. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we talked about like personal development. There's a book that says like if how tos were enough, we'd all be rich, skinny, and happy, because you can read all the books in the world, but really you have to do the other practices too. And you know, I mean, I coach people. They come in, they get so excited about the level of content and training that we have inside of our team group. They just go to town on it. And I always set a precedence as they're getting started and they're launching. I'm like, look, you're gonna wanna dive in and dive deep into all of this training. Don't do it, resist the urge, because you're gonna get analysis paralysis. And it's easy to do that in our lives. And you take in so much and you get so overwhelmed. It's true. Uh, there is gonna be a book coming out with all my things. <laughs> it's gonna be a coffee book. I have already, I get, I get royalties on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna outsource that to you. <laughs> I enough to do, you know, uh-huh. Paris, California. Uh, true. Um, so I have found in switching my morning routine around, instead of just taking information in, actually that's the last thing I do. I start with meditation mm. and prayer. Um, for me, prayer is something that I've always had in my life. It looks different than it used to, and it has always evolved and changed, but it is really around it is around gratitude. It's asking for strength. It's asking for courage. It's um, it's asking to. It's asking for surrender. Those are some of the things that bring me a strong sense of inner peace and faith in that what is going to be will be, regardless of like I can only control so much of the things that I want in my life and allowing me to let go. So prayer has been really great for that, and then meditation is really just getting myself into that flow state, letting go, connecting with my body, my breath, and that clarity that I need. And then um, like gratitude, affirmation. Yeah. Uh, affirmation, really important. This was something that was in a group recently uh, where I joined in on the conversation and it really being around affirming what it is you want, but also bringing in a component of you will have this because of so for example, somebody asked me to give an example and it was, um, you know, I will be a six figure earner because of the value that I provide for my audience. Like that's a generalization, but allowing your brain to actually answer a question of why will you be this because you do this and really getting yourself into like that action. So affirmations is a big one. It's that again, it's that talking to yourself more than you listen to yourself because yourself will tell you all sorts of stuff, right? Um, but you can retrain your brain. So those are some of my oh, practices. And then fitness. Yeah, wellness can yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the whole mind thing, uh, you know, that, that whole rewiring our, our, our habitual patterns, I and mean, that's, that's really now the, the new landscape of uh, personal development. Right? There's yeah. so much there. And yeah, you know, the affirmations, it's, it's super powerful. How do, we, how do we rewire, you know, when we want to change? Uh, it takes work it, and it takes comp- repetitive, consistent behavior to change those those thought patterns, you know, especially in this day and age, a lot of us have been brought up with some negative fear-based thought patterns, mm. you know, um, and, and that's uh, the subconscious mind is such a, a powerful entity uh, and it's a great weapon to use when we know how to use it. Right, and we can activate it, and 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 you know all this. What we're talking about here really is going towards activating that and rewiring and, and creating these these new belief systems, right? And anchoring that with emotion, because at the end of the day, you know we have when we visualize, when we af- when we affirm, it has to be anchored in an emotional uh, context. Yeah. Right. It can't just be all intellectual. Right. There has to be. What does it really mean? What does it feel like? You know, what would it feel like for you to be in Paris in, in three weeks? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure that gets you all warm and fuzzy, right? Like All I have to do is go back and look through my Instagrams <laughs> and I'm like so. mentally checked out and already there. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, we talked about that a little bit actually today. I talked about back when I used to work on yachts and uh, on my days off where I had the whole boat to myself, I would lay on the deck and 
drink rosé and pretend like it was my boat. <laughs> Talk about visualization at its finest. I won't tell you what else I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> was it spritzer in the left hand or the right hand? Uh, both. Oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Uh, uh, yeah, and you know, I think it is, again, like when it comes to deciding what it is that you want, it's that clarity, right, first. But when it comes to reforming those those thought patterns and like rewiring all that stuff, creating new habits, it's first that awareness, like being aware of the language that you're using, the people you're surrounding yourself with, how you're spending your day, like really bringing awareness to like, what is it that I'm doing now? And if I want these things, what do I need to shift? Like what are those small shifts that I need to make? And ultimately, what are you trying to do? Well, each of us have just recently through work recently, uh, change the, the frequency on the radio dial. You know that's what you're doing. How do I? I I'm at this. I'm at this station. This station doesn't serve me, mm -hmm. right? I want to get on a different frequency, and and really, it is that frequency is 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 ultimately a higher level frequency, right? Because it, it's an alignment and it serves us, and serving us depends on all of us, right? What subjectively, however, uh, the the secret sauce is it needs to be a higher frequency. There needs to be a higher energy out to higher energy in um, support. So surrounding yourself, right? Because what go, it's a ripple effect. What goes out comes back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, for people that are struggling with a variety of life choices or smaller non-life defining choices, but you know. Who are you surrounded by? That's a big thing too, you know? 100%. I have to say my circle of influence mm -hmm. and the people I spend the most of my time with has changed drastically in the last couple of years, in the last decade. Um, yeah. I mean, it is it is a constant evolution. We even talked about this because we were, we were talking about our travel. So we're both Americans living in Canada. Don't hold that against us. <laughs> <laughs> Both trying to figure out why the heck we left the warm weather. Mm -hmm. um, have lived in multiple places, and we were talking about, well, did you keep in touch with these people yeah. um, in these different walks of life that we've had? Like when I was back in the ski resorts and in yachting and all these different experiences I've had in my life before Facebook, actually probably a good thing. Um <laughs> And I'm like, no, yeah. I didn't. But I think I kept in touch with the people that I wanted to keep in touch with, where I really felt that connection. And um, but it's evolved over time. And you said the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I I lived in New York and L. A. for 14 years total between the two cities. 12 years in New York City and, and two in L. A. And there's so many people that I just, um, yeah, I didn't I didn't keep in contact with. And I you know I I, I wish I did because there were some really amazing people. I do have some contacts in LA that probably over the last three or four years I've reached out to and reestablished. So, which I will be connecting with. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when I go to Southern California. <laughs> totally, no problem. And uh, yeah, you know, um, and each one of those re, as you just said, reestablished contacts for myself are people that I generally want to, to. Um, to be connected with it's 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 not necessarily just a nostalgia thing because there's people from New York back in the day and I'm like oh it'd be great just to see how they're doing mm -hmm. that doesn't doesn't mean that there's a uh, that deep connection and and, and the, the 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 ones that I've reestablished with there is that that deep connection we've gone through something together and, and they're of like-minded peeps so yeah. to speak, right connection is extremely yeah. important and you know I mean especially nowadays <clears throat> with all the apps and the technology that we have and the social media, it's easy to be connected and be completely disconnected. But really, like the inspiration, that energy that we've been talking about, that clarity, that comes from having conversations with people who are on that same frequency yeah. as you, who are on that vibration. And there's like, we're all here to learn from each other and have those conversations. I feel so lucky because, you know, there was a time in my life where. I was surrounded with a lot of people who maybe were inspired by what I was doing. Some didn't believe it was possible. Some wanted nothing to do with my journey, did not support it whatsoever. 
um, you know, like those friendships kind of went along the wayside. And now I feel like I can have a conversation and truly be my authentic self and be like own who I am in this space and time with the people that I surround myself with without any sort of fear of judgment, but actually people who are like, hell yeah. (laughs) You know, I got a, I got a message from a girlfriend of mine yesterday. She's actually the person who introduced me to network marketing eight years ago. And we have always had an incredible connection. We met through a friend and we stayed in touch over the years and she voice clips me on WhatsApp and she's like, I mean, how incredibly cool is it, Johanna? You're living downtown in Vancouver. Like you've got a rockin' business, you've got a rockin' lifestyle. You're about to jet set to Europe. Like a couple of months ago, you were telling me there was something that you wanted, like you wanted to make this transition. You wanted to go home. And then you were like, how is this even possible? How is it going to happen? And now you're, you're doing it and you don't even know how it's possible. You're just, you made this shift and you made this decision. And she's like, I can't wait to see what's happening next. Those are the kind of people you want to have in your circle mm-hmm. who are cheering you on and telling you like, yeah, go for it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and those, you give people permission to also go for it um, when you make that permission for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Is that like, is that a mic drop? That was a mic drop. <laughs> I mean, that really, you know? It's... You guys feeling inspired? Give us some hearts. Give us some flame emojis. With some love. Give some us fire some love. And love. Um, okay, so you know what? I'm going to close out, but how do people find you? How do they follow along for more inspiration and tips and coaching? Yeah, well, feel free to uh, to search me out on Facebook, James Gardner. Um, at, at Can Ordinary Inspire is my Facebook. You can also find us at Leap Zone Strategies, Leap, LeapZoneStrategies.com, Leap Zone Strategies Facebook. You know, the, the, the two ladies that own the company are an amazing, soul-inspiring individuals. Uh, just talk about trailblazers and life crushers, you know, um, and just elevating, elevating those around. And so I'm really in a, a, just a very fortunate place to be in and, and meeting epic people like you. And, and um, yeah, you know, and, and strike out, strike up a, a conversation. Uh, one thing I, that drew me to uh, Joe was, as I said the other day or yesterday, was your conversations, right? Like even in, in your posts, it's as if you're having a conversation with written content. And uh, there's, that goes a long way and it's, a, it's, a di- it's somewhat of a, not a dying art form, but it's, it's not prevalent. People hide behind things too, too easy or people can now just step up and preach. And that's not it, it's authentic cu- communication, right? So. Um, I would love to engage with, with any of you authentically as well, and, and uh, I'm sure this won't be the last of, what do we call it, the J&J? What, what was it? J&J uh, Brace for Impact? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which also inspired me to um, start moving forward on a podcast idea that I've had for a long time that I was going to put on a back burner, and then I was like, no. This doesn't belong on a back burner. Like the conversations that I'm having right now with people that I'm meeting and coming across in this path right now, like these conversations have to be shared. There you go. Speaking of which, can I do a shameless plug for my office? Yeah, of course. The podcast (laughs) that she opened with. (laughs) Shameless uh, though. Shameless. (laughs) Hey, authentic shameless. No. Uh, Obstacle Course Podcast. Obstacle Course Podcast. It's, It's... found on all the platforms, YouTube, Spotify, etc. Uh, as I think it's obstaclecourse.com. I think obstacle I don't remember. We'll drop a link. We'll drop for a you. link. But episode 45, uh, I it's a uh, it's my life story uh, from weak asthmatic kid to New York to LA hobnobbing with celebrities, being destitute, <laughs> going through a life-changing um, family situation and and sitting on the couch next to Johanna. So rock and roll. There we go. Yeah, definitely check it out. If you are catching, if you're just hopping on, definitely go back. Hey Beth, go back and catch the replay from the beginning. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. If you share the broadcast, make sure you let us know that you share the broadcast. Definitely connect on with James. I've tagged him in this video so you can go over and friend him up. Um, I think you'll get a lot of value there. Somebody who has fully lived lots of different aspects of life who you can learn a lot about fitness and mindset and coaching and um, just living. Life. Like that is 
That is the ultimate goal is living, not getting so busy making a living that you forget to live your life. Right? Yeah. Living in high definition, as I like to say, every day. Let's do it. Unfiltered. Unfiltered and in high def. There we go. <laughs> right on, you guys. Thank right. you so much for tuning in today. Look forward to the next 13 days of sharing some epic stuff with you. All things marketing, personal development, all that good stuff. Uh, tips and business tips and stuff like that, you know where you can find me, but johannahunt.ca. There's some great content over there. Um, I'm looking forward. Thank you for joining us today. Nice. Thanks for making time for us. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.